All right, so that was the story of how I ended up on this stage. And I'm here to talk about Dart, the Dart language. And I guess that's the language, that's the reason we're all here for, right? That's Dart, JS, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> something we do have in common is that we love the web, you and I. And in, like in the last five years, it has changed tremendously. Um, I mean, web browsers are now 100 times faster, like the same, on the same machine, and now 100 times faster than five years ago. And we know when we give that kind of power to developers, what happens next. They want more, more performance, more features. And indeed, you code more, I mean, web apps have gone into a lot, a big, I mean, JavaScript code. You get a lot and a lot of JavaScript code. Lots of new features, WebRTC, 3D graphics. Um, now with the web, you actually want to do what you had before when you were building native apps. You want the full thing, right? And we're of this opinion that, yeah, the web has changed tremendously in five years. But the programming language and the tools, they haven't really changed. And now we're, we're I mean, this programming product productivity, and that's what we heard a lot today, is a major bottleneck when you want to create web apps. And that's the reason we started Dart. And you may know Dart as a language, and it is a language uh, that will be very familiar to uh, you if you know JavaScript. I guess you do. Uh, if you know Java, C Sharp. Um, it has a rich set of libraries, number, dates, collections, asynchronous programming, very rich set of libraries. It has a productive IDE, that's a lightweight version of Eclipse, actually, a stripped down version of Eclipse, that supports all the things that actually Java developers have always been used to. Type checking, refactoring, debugging, and soon profiling. We have a compiler to JavaScript called Dart to JS. And we have what we call Dartium. And that's Chromium with a native VM embedded in it that runs Dart natively. OK, so I'm going to give a short um, syntax um, slide um, about what the, decision, the decisions we took when designing the language. Dart has curly braces so that you and I can read the code. It has semicolon so that you guys can complain about something. <laughs> and we're in France, right? So I'm French. We have closures and a shorthand syntax when you want to write shorthand closures. We have string interpolation, warning you the plus pitfalls with strings in JavaScript. We have method cascades. That's just a very nifty syntactic sugar uh, where you actually don't have to repeat the receiver. So you can just do whatever things you want to do on a, an object that is returned by here, query hash button. We have name parameters with the colon. So that's the syntax. But we have way more. We have classes. We have optional types. You don't have to put types in your code. You can just put var. Or if you want to, you put the types. And then you get a type checking from the IDE or from an analyzer. We have generics. Lexical scoping, no more weird this. Isolates, kind of a web worker, but with more features. We have syntactic sugar for initializing fields. What is the most common thing you do when you have a constructor? And that's being Java or JavaScript. Take parameters, initialize uh, the fields. Well, here, you just need to say, OK, what are the fields names? This are X, this are Y and they get initialized. 
We have mixins and a broken animation, but no such method. And operator overriding, so that you can do matrix plus matrix, vector plus vector. And a few weeks ago, we announced Dart 1.0. And what it means really is that now the language is stable, the libraries are stable, so you can build products with it. We actually have a couple of external customers using it. This is a screenshot of um, Stage XL uh, game. Stage XL as kind of a port of the Flash API over Dart. Um, this is a screenshot of Blossom. It's a product management app, all coded in Dart. And this is um, a screenshot of Soundtrap. Uses all the new fancy features of HTML5, WebRTC, all coded in Dart. I actually have a video that I need to launch of an app called Montage, made by Mixbook. Mixbook is the world's first collaborative scrapbook editor for creating photo books. You can add photos from your computer or your favorite photo sharing site, then use our auto mix feature to have us create your book or add them yourself. The way you can fully personalize your mixed book. You can move, rotate. All right, it works as expected. But <laughs> all of that, that's coded in Dart. It's a, it's a company called, um, I don't remember the name of the company. Uh, Mixbook, sorry. Mixbook, and the product is called uh, Montage, and that's all uh, written in Dart. All right, so I have a few minutes left, and I will talk about Mythbusters. There's been a lot of myths around Dart when it launched in beta, that was two years ago. And I want to make sure that now you know what Dart actually is and what it, how it's going to help you. So the first myth that I want to bust is Dart is only for Chrome. And that is not true. Dart does not break the web. And I, need, I, need, I really need to make that clear. Um, and I have a few minutes to, uh, to fill. So really, Dart does not break the web. I mean, even a browser gets that. Uh, we compile to JavaScript. And that's like you can compare it to any other uh, language that compiles to JavaScript. GWT from Java to JavaScript. CoffeeScript, TypeScript, any others. They compile to JavaScript. And the code we compile to JavaScript runs on any modern browser, even on IE. But as you notice, that's IE9. We don't support before any nine. Whatever. This is a screenshot of the uh, stage Excel I showed uh, earlier. Um, that runs on Firefox, if it's not obvious. Myth number two, Dart compiles to blow the JavaScript. I have this print hello world app. I compile it to JavaScript. It takes one megabyte. That was true two years ago when we wanted to have something, I mean, that works. But today, that's not. This snippet here, print hello dart, compiles to 2,500 bytes of JavaScript. I mean, it kind of depends um, on, the, uh, on the version of the compiler you're getting. But not, not, not the one megabyte you'll see online, uh, which was like from two years ago. Uh, and it's part of the goals of Dart to JS, the Dart to JavaScript compiler. We have three goals: small code, fast code, and retain Dart semantics. So the retain Dart semantics, that's where you get this extra, I mean, 2,500 2, bytes. There's some things going on here, and that's because we want to retain Dart semantics. Typically, when you're accessing an array out of bounds, you should get a range error in Dart. You don't have that in JavaScript. You get undefined. So we need to implement that. 
So we have implemented in Dart to JS a lot of compiler optimizations, one of them being tree shaking. So imagine you have your method main. And in your code, you have two methods called baz and foo. Main calls foo. But main also imports another library. And foo calls bar. And in library, you just happen to have another boo method. What happens in Dart to JS is that we'll only compile the things you're using. And in that case, that's just main foo and bar. The way we do this, it's actually very, uh, uh, it's in the compiler. We do uh, like what we call two-level tree shaking. We have a, we read the Dart code, right, with a Dart parser, so the parsing goes really fast. We don't actually parse the methods right away. Once we have all this Dart parsing going on, we do resolution. So we start with main, and we resolve anything that main touches. Previously, that was foo. Once the resolution is done, we do code generation. So we compile to JavaScript. And that's another tree shaking happening. Like in your method, you have dead code. You're calling logging code, but you have if false before. So we'll never compile that. And finally, we made the code. Myth number three I don't need Dart for performance. I have asm.js. <sighs> It's a very awkward moment when I have to answer those questions when someone asks me, because I know that there's a, there's a gap between what I know, what I'm expert in, and what he knows, what he's expert in. I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, we're all experts in different things. But you know that the conversation could, could just go berserk. Um, as I'm the JS, I'll, 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 I'll make the conversation serious here, because I don't have much time. But asm.js, that's the subset of JavaScript targeted to optimize numerical computations. Uh, it has no garbage collection whatsoever. You cannot do method calls. Dart, on the other hand, is a whole new programming language. Method calls, garbage collection, and design with performance in mind. And to just give a brief um, Slide, sli uh, a few slides about performance. Where does the team that designed Dart come from? A background is, pro is making programming language fast. Dave designed, I wasn't there at this time, Hotspot, when Java was horribly slow. They designed V8, and that started the uh, web performance boost. So when we designed Dart, our guiding principle was performance. So I'm going to compare three benchmarks, uh, one running in V8. Uh, sorry, three benchmarks, running on V8, running on V8 with a compiled version of the Dart version, JavaScript, and one running on the Dart VM. One, is the, one benchmark is Delta Blue. That's a constraint solver. Uh, the other is Richards, simulating an operating system. And the other is Tracer, uh, a ray trace benchmark. And here you can see that Dart, the, uh, the, the JavaScript version compared to the Dart to JS version can run faster, slower, equivalent. Faster? What the hell? How can that be? Well, we actually have the Dart language. We can do global optimizations because we can do whole program analysis. It's a closed world assumption. We don't have eval. Um, so we can do global compile time optimizations. There's this uh, website that we have online where you can actually track performance. The, uh, the blue bar, that's the virtual machine. And you can see that over time, it's picking up, right? And now it's like two times faster than, uh, than V8. I'm going to finish on this slide. This last slide here shows the performance with the VM in the blue. The Dart VM also runs server-side, Node.js. You, know, you all know that when we have something similar. It runs on different architecture. And it can snapshot apps to give you a 10x faster startup. 10x faster startup. 
Here's a list of uh, projects and, and um, companies that use Dart. So you can see we have a lot of users. And the last slide is, I did it.